Hi everyone and you're so much welcome to today's tutorial. I still remain your most worthy shoe making it easy to tell. Oduroli Mojibola, guess what today? I am going to be showing you how not to be artistic with this beautiful double buckle sander we have right here on the screen. You don't have to be artistic to be able to create this. I'm gonna be simply simplifying it to you and I'm sure you'll be wild at how you can create this without having to draw on the shoe last. Now I guess you're watching this channel for the first time. Yes, you're welcome to my channel and all we do here is make shoe making simple and easy. We try as much as possible to use little tools to actually accomplish a lot of design and end up having a perfect finishing so go right and subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell so that each time I upload a video you will be notified now before we move into today's tutorial I would like to know in the comment section are you a beginner are you at the intermediary level or you are a pro just trying to upgrade your level of knowledge I actually have a gift for every levels for beginner I have a tip I would like to share with you if you are the intermediary level I have a tip and then if you are the pro and trying to hard all oh, my sales is what I want to work on whatever is the major challenge you are having please let me know so I would like to you to introduce yourself like my name is Odurole Mojibola. I am at the beginner's level. This is the major challenge I'm having as a beginner. So go right to the comment section and do that right away. And I will be sending you your gift. Yes, I'll be sending you your gift item at whatever level and whatever challenge you highlight down there. So right now, let us go into today's tutorial. I need you to do something for me. Sit back and I'm gonna be right Alright, we are going to be starting with the strappy part of this particular design that we have here. Now, it's actually a buckle sander. It, it don't look like um, a baking stock design, but a little bit different actually. But I see it as being classic. So I think we should share, you know, how to actually go about the pattern. So the first thing is I'm going to be using this shoe last. I need you to know that if you don't have a shoe last, I would suggest that you use the baby's leg. Yes, you use the baby's leg or check probably the person you are making it for if he's not around. Look for somebody of the same age range just to guide you on how to go about it. Now, this is how you measure when you are using a child's foot. Now, let's say this is the baby's smallest toe. I want you to take the measurement from that baby measurement, that baby toe. Now, let's assume this is the toe. Take the measurement from the tip of the toe. You understand? Don't forget you are measuring by the size. So, take it from the tip like this of the smallest toe. So, I think that one should be able to guide you on where to start. So, let's say we are covering the, 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 the smallest toe, the tip. We are starting from the tip. Let it go down. Now, by the time you get to the ankle, don't exactly pick right under the ankle pick like one centimeter or 1.5 centimeter away from that ankle bone now let's say the ankle bone is actually around here for the child now it doesn't matter whether it's a child or an adult so this can actually work for a child it can actually work for an adult as well so just follow the same principle and it will definitely give you a very perfect result so now let's say this is the ankle bone I'm going to suggest that instead of actually picking exactly under the ankle bone, measure about 1.5 centimeter away from the ankle bone. So now my ankle bone 10.5, then if it is mi minus one, that is going to give us 9.5. This is 9.5. This is not 10. This is the calibration for 10. So at the end of the day, instead of 9.5, I'm going to be picking 9. I hope you understand so it's going to be 1.5 centimeter away from the ankle bone if you want to actually pick it up at the ankle bone you can but then you must actually ensure that all of this side you must ensure that all of this side is actually redirected towards the instep so now that I know what I'm using, it's actually nine. So I'm just going to go ahead, write down my nine centimeter. Then the next thing, now if you are going to be using a shoelace, if you are going to be using a shoelace, it means that 
you are going to be positioning the same way i'm going to say tell you that you should position the same way you know like on the average at what point at, as in where will i have placed them let's say i have a strap let me quickly pick up a strap to show us let's say i have a strap that's going to be staying here so i just want to say okay this is where the staff would definitely be now so i can just decide to use that particular side and mark that side this way you understand i can decide to mark that so now that i've marked that particular point i'll just go ahead and use my measuring tape to measure from that place so you know away from definitely this ankle bone now it looks like the position when you are using your shoe last is different from when you are using the feet just because it has already covered um your the smallest to here you understand because at the end of the day you find out that it is at nine and nine is exactly at the ankle bone at this point you may you might have to actually work with eight if you are working with a shoe last you can decide to work with eight don't forget in the process of cutting your pattern, transferring your pattern into your leather, definitely there, there is possibility of a little increase, which can make it end up being, you know, let's say, let's say about um, 8.2 or 3. And it will still work definitely very well. So it's not like it has to cover the old foot. The design doesn't have to cover the old foot. I'm just trying to give you the anal analysis of how you can actually create this particular design. I mean the side of the design. Like I said, we are going to be starting with the front part today, the strap part today. So let's go right into that. If you look at the design according to what we have on the screen, you find out that this inner part is actually wider than what is suspended into the buckle strap. So I am going to be making use of about um, 3.5 centimeter for this side and then 4.5 centimeter for this particular side please join me and let's go right into that so i told us i'm going to be using three centimeter 3.5 centimeter for one and then um, three 4.5 centimeter for the second part please i need you to know that all you need is just um, the same process for the 3.5 and the 4.5 so let me quickly go with the 4.5 first now before i do that we need to understand what length we need because definitely we are going to be having some of the strap you know climbing on top of that side i was explaining initially so let's say it stops this way so what do we have right here this is 12 12 plus 3 is going to give us some um, 15 i know somebody is asking what is the 3 for is your lasting allowance so 12 plus 3 is 15 so i'm going to be making use of 15 centimeter long strap so now let's quickly go into this i know you might want to see what this really look like so 4.5 I think we have it to be 15, right? 15. 4.5, yes, this is also 4.5 right here. I'm going to be joining them together. So we have 4.5 by 15 centimeter. Oh no, what is happening here? So this is what I have. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try to partition this. Now, what do I mean? I'm going to partition each of, the, each of them into 1.5, 1.5. You will know why as we proceed. 1.5, 3, 4.5, 6, 7.5, 9, 10.5. All right, now that we have already we have partitioned this, we are just going to go ahead and begin to reduce. Now, the reason I partition it this way is because now this the widest part is actually what we have where we have 4.5. Now you will find out that where the buckle strap, where the buckle actually is suspended into, is not as wide as the as the as the side. So I'm going to progressively increase it and um, reduce it using this um this partitioning 
So for the first partition, it still remains, of course, this side remains as 4.5. This side, I'm still going to maintain my 4.5, which is for the first one. So the next one, I'm going to reduce it to 4. I believe you can see this. I'm going to reduce this to 4. This is 4. The next one as well, I'm reducing to 4. Please follow me gently. I'm reducing it to 4. Four. The next one is going to be 3.5. 3.5 now let me show you what it looks like can you see that this one also will be 3.5 so at this point I'm going to move to 3 then I'm going to move to 3 again now I want you to know that the tip this particular side your buckle width will determine what it should be. So I'm going to actually from there begin to use um, two centimeter as the case may be. You understand? I'm going to use and try to just make sure that it still goes with it. So I believe my buckle is actually two point. Uh, is going to be about two centimeter. Now, in case you don't see what this looks like, let me try to carve. What I have, don't mind the fact that um, I'm sure you will see this as I cut it out. We are still going to maintain this. Please note, it's not compulsory that yours you have partition of um, 1.5. You can decide to reduce your own. Can you see what it looks like? So I can decide to definitely shape this. Now you can see what I have right here. So this is what it means. It means this is going to be coming in right here. And this is going to be coming here. Can you see what I have? So the same thing I did here is what I am actually going to be doing on this particular side as well the same partitioning the same reduction so you can see what i have at the end of the day so i want to believe with this you should be able to create your strap and get ready as i actually teach us in the next video how to go about the side thank you once again for joining me today and i need you to know that our weekend shoe making class is still available then registration is on for the month of april it's actually um, 1,500 Naira for your commitment fee. And um, we are going to take it up from there. So one of these are the things I actually teach right there. I pick a design, teach them how to create it. Go ahead and teach them how to go about lasting and um, all of the upper creation and all of that. And we do a lot of marketing stores because I believe if you acquire a skill and you cannot market it, it's as good as you did not even understand the skill. So make sure you go register. Like I said, it's about $3 for those of us who are not in Nigeria. And um, I'm sure you will thank me for actually doing that. So see you in my next video as I'm going to be explaining how to go about the side of this design. I don't want to bore us with a long video. So please, this is long enough for this particular one. Thank you once again. And I still remain your most wealthy shoe making made easy to talk. Oh, do See you. Bye.